This is my second video from Hollywood Forever Cemetery. I don't think I mentioned this in the first video, but you can actually see the Hollywood sign from the cemetery. Today I'll start off in the Cathedral Mausoleum. Here we find the urn of actor David White. He started acting in Broadway in 1949 before moving on to film and television. He's best remembered for playing the role of Larry Tate in the sitcom Bewitched, which ran from 1964 to 1972. Other TV shows and films that he appeared in include Sweet Smell of Success 1957, The Untouchables 1959, The Fugitive 1963, and his final film role Dick Tracy in 1990. Next to him is the urn of his son, Jonathan White, who was killed in the terrorist bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 in Lockerbie, Scotland in 1988. David White became reclusive and bitter after this tragedy and died a few days before the second anniversary of his son's death. David White died on November 27th, 1990, following a heart attack. He was aged 74. Next is the temporary tomb of Rudolf Valentino. Originally meant to serve as a temporary tomb, he remains here almost a hundred years after his death. Valentino was born on the 6th of May 1895 in Italy, and he emigrated to the United States in 1913. He became a star after playing Giulio in The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, 1921. His most famous film role was The Sheik in 1921, in which he played a wealthy Arab prince. The film also spawned a sequel, The Son of Sheik, in 1926. He was a skilled dancer and incorporated different styles of dance into his films. Valentino died on August 23rd, 1926, at the age of 31. The cause of death was peritonitis after he suffered a ruptured ulcer. His death caused worldwide hysteria and several suicides. He had died in New York City, and 100,000 mourners lined the streets of the city for the funeral service. His body was later transported by train to Los Angeles, where a second funeral was held. This crypt was provided by his former friend June Mathis, who had arranged for him to be buried in her family vault, as he had no final resting place arranged. She died a year later and was interred next to Valentino. Mathis used to be a close friend of Valentino, but they had a falling out in 1924 over a script dispute. June Mathis was one of the most influential women in Hollywood in the 1920s. She wrote over 100 films in the silent era, including the original Ben-Hur film. It is said that the ghost of Valentino haunts this mausoleum. Just opposite the grave of Valentino is the grave of Peter Finch. Finch was born in London, England in 1916, but he grew up in France, India and Australia. Australia is where he started acting in the 1930s. In 1948, he was discovered by Laurence Olivier. Olivier signed Finch to a personal contract and brought him to London to perform on stage. But Finch would go on to have an affair with Olivier's wife, Vivian Lee. He appeared in 50 films during his career. Some of his film roles include The Nun Story in 1959, The Trials of Oscar Wilde in 1960, but he's probably best remembered for his part as Howard Beale, the unhinged news anchor in the film Network, 1976. On January 14th, 1977, Finch was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel. He was due to appear on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson when he collapsed in the lobby of the hotel. He had suffered a heart attack and he died at the age of 60. Peter Lorre, Hungarian-born actor known for playing villains and spies in his films. He was originally a star in Germany after appearing in Fritz Lang's film M in 1931. He starred in Alfred Hitchcock's original version of The Man Who Knew Too Much in 1934. He was also in The Maltese Falcon 1941 and Casablanca in 1942. In 1954, he became the first actor to play a James Bond villain in the film Casino Royale. He died of a stroke in March 1964, at the age of 59. In 1977, 
His daughter Kathleen Laurie was almost a victim of the Hillside Strangler, which turned out to be two people. It's believed that she was released by the killers when they realised who her father was. The grave of Douglas Fairbanks and his son Douglas Fairbanks Jr. This must be the grandest grave in the cemetery. Douglas Fairbanks was a huge star during the silent era, best known for his swashbuckling roles in silent films such as The Thief of Baghdad, Robin Hood and The Mark of Sorrow. He married the actress Mary Pickford in 1920 and they were known as Hollywood royalty. However, his career declined with the advent of the talkies and his last film was in 1934. He died of a heart attack in Santa Monica in 1939. Buried with him is his son Douglas Fairbanks Jr., also an actor. He starred in several films in the 1930s but did not reach the same level of fame as his father. He was married to actress Joan Crawford from 1929, but they divorced in 1933 after a stormy relationship. He died of a heart attack in New York City in the year 2000 at the age of 90. And there's a poor reflecting pool in front of the grave. Sadly, it's been uh, drained at the moment. This is actually where the funeral was held for Chris Cornell lead singer of Soundgarden. They had chairs along each side of this reflecting pool. Cornell's Soundgarden made the name for themselves in the 90s as part of the Fabulous Four, which included Nirvana, Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains. He was known as the modern-day Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin with his four-octave vocal range. He's remembered for songs like Fell on Black Days, Outshined and Black Hole Sun. On the 18th of May 2017, Soundgarden were playing at the Fox Theatre in Detroit. This would be their final performance together. Later that night, Chris Connell was found dead by his bodyguard. He had taken his own life. His funeral was held here on the 26th of May, but his body had been cremated a few days earlier. Chester Bennington sang the song Hallelujah at the funeral. A few months later, he would also take his own life. I'll show you his grave now. His grave is one of the most visited here. Chris Cornell, voice of our generation and an artist for all time. At one time the grave was only this um, headstone that it's been changed over the years. After the private funeral service, fans were able to pay their respects at the grave during a public service which was held the same day. Chris Cornell was 52 years old. And over here we have the grave of Helena Hitchens, cinematographer. She was a, an Ukrainian, as you can see by the flags. And she was fatally shot by actor Alec Baldwin using a prop gun on the set of the film Rust. Helena was born in Ukraine and grew up on a Soviet Union military base in the Arctic, as her father was a naval officer. She originally worked as a journalist before becoming a fashion photographer in New York, but she then moved to Los Angeles to pursue a filmmaking career. She was 42 years old when she died. Next to Helena Hitchens is the grave of Tony Scott, English film director and brother of Ridley Scott. He directed a number of blockbusters, including Beverly Hills Cop 2, The Last Boy Scout, Man on Fire, Days of Thunder, and the first Top Gun film. And 
he took his own life in 2012 at the age of 68. His widow is actress Donna Wilson, who he met on the set of Days of Thunder. And as you can see, he was also a rock climber. The grave of Anton Yelchin, actor. He was just a young actor who played the character of Chekhov in the Star Trek reboot. He also appeared in a number of other films and he died in a freak car accident. The Russian-born actor also appeared in other films such as Alpha Dog, Fright Night and Green Room. On June 19th, 2016, he was on his way to meet friends at a rehearsal. When he didn't show up, his friends went to his house and they found him deceased by his car. It appears that he had momentarily exited the car on his steep driveway and the car rolled back and pinned him against the concrete pillar. He was 27 years old. Don Adams worked mostly as a television actor, best known as Maxwell Smart in the late 60s TV sitcom Get Smart, and he was also the voice of Inspector Gadget. He was born as Donald James Yami, but when he married singer Adelaide Adams in 1947, he adopted her last name as his stage name. He served in the US Marines during World War II, and he contracted malaria during the Battle of Guadalcanal. He was hospitalised for more than a year and later became a drill instructor. He won three consecutive Emmy Awards for his performance in Get Smart, which he sometimes directed and wrote. He died in 2005 at the age of 82. Howie Pyro, bass player and founding member of the Blessed Freaks Degeneration and PCP Highway. He was friends with Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols and he was one of the last people to see him alive. Howie died in May 2022, age 61. Donald Leroy LaFontaine. If you don't know the name, you'll know the voice. He was a voice actor who recorded 5,000 film trailers over four decades and he died in 2008 at the age of 68. Rance Howard, actor and father of Ron Howard, the director starred in such films as Independence Day and The Beautiful Mind, also Cinderella Man and Nebraska. He died in 2017 at the age of 89. Hannah Chaplin, mother of Charlie Chaplin and his two half-brothers. She was a stage actress in London, but she had to stop performing due to mental illness. Charlie Chaplin relocated her to Los Angeles in 1921 and she died in 1928, aged 63.